The halftone effect uses dots of varying size to replicate the appearance of a colour gradient. It evokes some elements of the pop art style, so when it's used in a game like this, it gives objects a sort of comic book appearance. It's perfect for games with a cartoony style, so in this video I'll show you how to apply the effect to 3D geometry using Shadergraph in the Universal Render Pipeline. It looks best at native resolution, so do try it on your own computer. Thanks to all my Patreon supporters who stuck with me in the 3 month gap between videos, and without further ado, let's get started. The halftone effect works by taking the shaded portions of the image and then applying coloured dots to those bits to darken the original colour a bit. That means the first step is finding those shaded regions. I'll keep this basic for now, I'll just use the lighting contribution from the main direction of light. There isn't a shader graph node to get this information yet, so that means we'll need to use a little bit of custom shader code. There's a link to the GitHub for this project if you don't want to copy it out yourself. After that, we'll need to find a way to turn these lighting values into tiny circles. We'll use the lighting amount as a threshold to determine how big the circle is at each point. Let's start by getting the lighting amount. Currently, there is no built-in node to do this in the latest LTS version of Unity, so we'll use some custom code and wrap it in a subgraph. I've used this same code a few times before, like for my cell shading effect, so this might look familiar. We'll start by writing the code. You'll need to create a new file called lighting.hlsl, which you'll need to do outside of the Unity editor due to the file extension, or just copy the completed file from GitHub. I won't go through the code with a fine-tooth comb, Broadly, we're gathering information from the main light in the scene. We take in the world position as an input, and output the direction, colour, and two attenuation values which represent the strength of the light after being impacted by distance and shadows respectively. This code fails to run in Shadowgrass preview windows because it doesn't use a real light, so we simulate one with a few default values. I think this code only works in URP, and that's the only pipeline I've tested the effect in, so do let me know in the comments if you manage to convert it for other pipelines. Next, create a subgraph by right-clicking in the project view and selecting Create, Shader Graph, Subgraph. On previous versions, it might still be under Create, Shader, Subgraph. In the middle, we'll add a custom function node, and in the node settings, we can set the type to File, drag lighting or HLSL into the source slot, and then type main light to use that function from the file. Then we'll set up the same inputs and outputs we had in the code we wrote earlier. Just make sure all the types and names are correct. On the property blackboard, we'll add a vector frame called world pause, and for the output node, we'll add the same outputs as the custom function node, except we'll only use one attenuation value. We can then link everything together. For the attenuation output, we'll just multiply the two attenuation values. It's a little bit tedious to go through this process just to get lighting information, so I'm glad there's a get main light direction node coming in Unity 2022.1, and hopefully they add more lighting nodes in the future. However, I try to stick to LTS versions for my videos, so we have to suffer instead. Fun times. At least we're done now, and we can move on to the actual halftone effect. Let's jump into this straight away, and I'll explain everything as I go. Create a new unlit graph by right-clicking in the project view and choosing Create Shader Graph URP Unlit Shader Graph. On previous Unity versions, this will be under Create Shader Universal Render Pipeline Unlit Shader Graph instead. I'll name it Halftone. You might be thinking, shouldn't we use Lit instead since we're applying the Halftone effect to the lighting? Now that's a good question. However, we can't configure how Unity applies lighting in a lit shader. So instead, we use an unlit shader and calculate the shading manually. Double click the shader graph asset and the shader graph editor should appear. We'll start by adding all the properties required for this effect, so in order, here's what we need. Base color and base texture properties exist on most of my shaders and we use them to control the base color or albedo of the object. The shading multiplier is a float property which I'll use to control how much darker the shadowed regions of the object is than the lit regions. I'll give it a default of about 0.1. The circle density property, which is another float, is used to control the size of the dots in the halftone effect. When you increase it, the size of each dot decreases. The default value will be say 5, but I'll likely increase this on materials. The softness property is a float which controls how much blending there is on the edge of a dot. I'll make the default 0, but we can increase this if we want. Rotation, another float property, is used to rotate the grid of dots so they're not necessarily aligned to the XY plane in screen space. 
The lid threshold determines the cutoff point where we treat lighting values as shaded or not. When we cross below this threshold, we start drawing dots. We'll make it one by default, but you can tweak this to look however you want. The fall off threshold, yet another float, is used to control how large the region is where we want to use dots. If we increase it, then the dots won't extend as far through the shaded region. I'll make the default value 2.5. Finally, we'll add a Boolean keyword called use screen space, which is ticked by default. When active, we'll sample the halftone dots in screen space, and when unticked, we'll use UV space instead, which means the dots will become aligned to the object geometry. Results in this mode will vary greatly depending on how you set up the UVs for your mesh. That's the properties done. There's a lot of them, but they all have a purpose. So let's start adding nodes to the graph surface. To start, we'll sample the base texture with a sample texture 2D node and multiply the result by base color. That gives us the color of parts of the object in direct light. For the parts of the object in shade, we'll take the lit color and use a color space conversion node to switch between an RGB, red, green, blue color, and an HSV, hue saturation value color. This is just a different way to represent colors. We'll separate out the components with a split node, leave the hue and saturation alone, and then multiply the value, or lightness, by the shading multiplier property. We can link each component back into a vector 3, convert back from HSV to RGB with a second color space conversion node, and that gives us the color for the bits of the object in the shade. The lit and unlit colors are the two values we'll switch between for the graph output, so we'll add a LERP node and connect the unlit color to the A slot and the lit color to the B slot. The third parameter, which is the interpolation factor between 0 and 1, will require a bit more effort to calculate. For now, let's connect the output of the LERP node to the base color block on the master stack because this will be the graph's only output. Let's leave plenty of space on the graph to the left of the LERP node and start figuring out what the halftone dot pattern should look like. We'll start with the UVs. If we're using screen space with a screen position node, the UVs start at 0, 0 in one corner and end in 1, 1 at the opposite corner. But if we use these UVs, then the dots will look a bit stretched horizontally. So we'll take the aspect ratio of the screen into account. We can do that by dividing the screen width by the screen height and then dividing the screen's y-coordinate by this value, and finally linking the x and modified y-coordinates back into a vector 2. If we're not using screen space, we can just use a UV node by itself, no modifications needed. To pick between these values, drag the use screen space property onto the graph and connect the two values accordingly. This gives us a base set of UV coordinates to work with. Multiply the UVs by the circle density property, and then use a rotate node to apply the rotation property. This gives us a final set of UVs before we create the halftone dot pattern. So, how will we create the pattern? There are several ways to do this, and most tutorials will probably use a texture, but I'm actually going to use the Voronoi node. That might be surprising, since we usually use Voronoi patterns for things like marble surfaces, or maybe Wind Waker's water, which is kind of Voronoi-like, but if you set the angle offset to zero, you get a neat grid of values aligned to the UVs, where each value represents the distance of each pixel from the midpoint of a grid tile. If we were to threshold these values with a step node, you'll see a grid of tiny circles, which is what we want. But we'll come back to that in a second, so don't add any step node for now, because the next step is to calculate the amount of light falling on the object. I'll use a simplified model and just calculate the diffuse lighting contribution from the main light. To do that, we take the dot product between the normal vector on the surface of the object and the light direction. That's easy enough to do with a normal vector node, a dot product node, and our get main light subgraph we made earlier. The resulting values are between minus 1 and 1, so let's multiply by the attenuation value from the light, then use a negate node on the result to invert the values. That last node might seem a bit weird to include, but it makes a later step work better. We now have light values that run from minus 1 to 1, but I want to remap them based on the two threshold properties we added, so here's what I'll do. I'll feed the lighting amount into a remap node, with the in min max values being between minus 1 and 1. The out max value is equal to the lit threshold property, and the out min value is equal to the lit threshold minus the fall off threshold. Now we just need to add a couple more nodes to tie everything together. Go back to the Voronoi node from earlier and drag out a smooth step node from its out output. 
The smooth step mode is a bit like the step function, but it provides two threshold values and Unity blends any input value that's between the two thresholds. For the first threshold, we'll use the output from the remap node, and for the second threshold, we'll take the remap output and add the softness property to it. If you use the appropriate default values, then you should see the halftone effect in action on the preview of this node. Finally, we connect the output of the smooth step node to the third parameter of the lerp node from earlier, and the graph is complete. I've added the shader to a few objects in the scene. It's up to you how you use the halftone effect. You might decide it works best on completely untextured objects like the sphere in front, or you can try and experiment with a bit of texturing, like on the Triceratops model in the back. I'd recommend not making your textures too busy, or the dots might look a bit out of place. In most cases, screen space mode will work best, but here's what the effect looks like when it's turned off. It's not exactly true halftone, I don't think, but I still think you can make something interesting using this mode. If you liked this tutorial and you want to see more examples with the Get Main Light subgraph, try my soul shading video. See you in the next video.